Ascension Lutheran Church. A very special welcome to guests and visitors that have joined us and are here with us today, whether that's in person or you're joining us online. We are glad and thankful that everyone is here every time we worship together because here at Ascension, we are all about Jesus and what God has done for us in Jesus and this free and full forgiveness that God gives us in Jesus. I'm Pastor Steve. I get to serve as the pastor here at Ascension. And today I'm excited because we get to continue in our three-week sermon and worship series that is all about the book of Hebrews. You remember a little bit from last week, right? We're looking at this very layered book that pulls things from the Old Testament way before Jesus was around and helps us understand that this was leading to Jesus. So kind of layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. Last week, we focused and talked a lot about how Jesus is better Better than the angels, better than earthly things, better than anything that's going on. Today, thank God, we learn another truth about Jesus. That not only is Jesus up there and better and God and glorious, but that Jesus came into our world. That Jesus chose to become like you and me. That Jesus was a real human being who really understands what you're going through. And he needed to be like us to be our Savior. That's the focus for our service this morning. Everything you're going to need for worship, you can find printed up here on the screens if you're in person or on your screen at home if you're joining us there. May God bless our worship. Our opening song is Christ the True and Better Adam.
please stand. We begin our worship each week with words that remind us of what our God does for us in our baptisms. There he washes us clean of our sins. There he adopts us and brings us and makes us a permanent part of his family. Now when we hear his name, we know partly that's our name too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, by Christ's authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are God. But in your grace and love for us, you came down into our world and became one of us. Give us confidence that because you died in our place, we are right with God. And comfort us with the knowledge that you know what we are going through. Through you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can sit down. Uh, Sunday school kids, you can come up in front. Uh, we have the awesome blessing and privilege today of listening to them proclaim this good news of Jesus for you, the light of the world. This is the light of my
Thanks, Sunday School Kids. I got questions for you when we do the, the kids' devotion. You guys are going to get to talk to me a little bit about that song in, in just a minute. But before that, we get to kind of the center and the core of our worship service, which is the Bible. Different parts of God's Word. Today, again, we're looking at the book of Hebrews. Today, we're going through chapter 2. We're going to listen to the entire chapter. The sermon's going to be based on this. Uh, But this is kind of like layer number 2 of the book of Hebrews. Layer number 1, Jesus is better. Layer number 2, pay attention to what Jesus does. Jesus is not just up there above us. His good news is, is better than everything else. Jesus also came down. Jesus became one of us. Jesus suffered for us so that we can be sure we're at one with God. This is Hebrews chapter 2. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man, that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here I am and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. So that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, He is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Kids, I said it just a couple seconds ago, but now I want to know. I don't remember if your Sunday school teacher warned you about this, but today, kids' devotion is going to be a little bit different. All I want to hear today are, what are some things you sang about in your song? Okay? Raise your hand if you can think of something. What did you sing about in your song today? Nora, kick us off. What did you sing about in your song? Jesus, good answer. And Jesus is the light, right? You had that light that was walking. You guys were stomping. Thank you, Delilah. What did you sing about today? We sang about um, everyone has a Yeah. Yeah, we're all different, right? You look around this room, we're all different people, but people that are connected to Jesus, we kind of have this light that shines from us, too. Margo, what did you sing about today? The light is Jesus. Oh, guys, guess what? That's all church is about every single time. Jesus is the light. And you guys sang it so many times today. Nora, what did you sing about today? Well, well, this will light my song. It's, um, it's making you remember how Jesus is the light to our path. 
We ask Nora. Another awesome thing, it's not only Jesus is like the light that we, we see, but Jesus helps us see where we're going. Jesus helps us know how to live life for him, right? You guys, that was really cool. Did you notice that all the adults and the parents, like it didn't even take half a second, and they were like, they were clapping for you guys. They were cheering for you. Do you guys know why, why we clapped for you and cheered for you? Can I let you in on a secret? Do you know why, Rain? Yes, they want to make us feel good. And do you know, guys, we would clap for you if you did anything. We'd be so excited for you if you did anything, right? But we did it because you were telling us about Jesus. You were sharing the most important message that there ever has been, that there ever will be in this world, that for all people, we can have a light in our lives, that we can have Jesus and Jesus' forgiveness for us. That is Awesome. Thank you so much for singing. Listen in the sermon. Today we're going to talk about Jesus and how Jesus, yeah, he's God. He's way up there. He's awesome, all powerful. But kids, do you know Jesus is like you? Jesus knows what it's like to be a kid. Jesus knows what it's like to scrape your knee. Jesus knows what it's like to, to live in this sin messed up world. And then Jesus dies for us so that we don't have to only have this, but that we can look forward to heaven. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for bringing all of us here today. Help us to listen carefully in the sermon and think about what you've done for us. Thank you also for giving us this awesome opportunity to share the good news of the light of the world, to tell others about Jesus. Help us to do that not only today in singing, but also in all of our lives with people who need to hear it. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with our next song, Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice.
Let's begin by all joining together and praying. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock, you are our redeemer. Amen. So again, this is week two of three in this series, looking at the book of Hebrews. And our series theme, which you see right up there, that, that kind of sets the direction for what we're going through every week as we're in this book. Hebrews just lays out the layers of God's plan, his blueprint to save us, that do stretch back, all the way back into the Old Testament times, through Jesus and what Jesus did. And even in the book of Hebrews, we get some of, this is for us, in our time today too. Hebrews is really cool because it shows us the little details, these kind of obscure Bible passages, and it pulls them into the text that we have today too. And it shows us these awesome little details that teach us here is part of God's plan, and here, and here, and here, which I think we can admit is pretty great for us who really like to know where we've been and where we are and where we want to go in the future too. And I think I said it only about 10 times already, so hopefully this is an easy quiz. But do you remember the big theme of last week, what we wanted to know? It was Jesus is better. Th okay, at least a couple people. Thank you. We got there. Uh, right? It started off with talking about how angels, they're pretty good. Big deal. Angels bless us as believers, and they watch over us, and they serve us. But last week, Jesus is better because Jesus is our Savior. Really, there's not even any comparison. Last week, angels talked about they're created, they're beings. Jesus is the creator. Angels have power and abilities to protect us from spirits and demons and awesome stuff. Jesus, though, is God with unlimited power, unlimited ability. The Old Testament, the angels were kind of scattered throughout that and in there too. But the Old Testament is centered around the Messiah, the Savior Jesus, who was going to come, how his work was going to be better, how Jesus just in every single way is better than those things. Layer one of Hebrews, layer one we got to get in our hearts, understand Jesus is better. Ready for layer two today? Now we get to chapter to layer number two and what you heard in the beginning of chapter two sounds pretty familiar on this theme of like Jesus is better here's where the writer kicks off we we must pay the most careful attention therefore to what we have heard so that we don't drift away from knowing about Jesus for since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation in Jesus. It's just pointing back to Jesus and what Jesus has done. But in other words, the good news of Jesus and how he saved us, spoiler alert, that's way better than the Old Testament laws, than the earthly focus that people lived out, all those illustrations. So the writer's encouraging us if we're not careful and we're not looking up at how much better Jesus is. And Jesus' salvation for us is it's very easy for us to get stuck in the here and the now and maybe even trying to earn forgiveness and earn grace from God and earn salvation from him. Hebrews 2 starts the same with Hebrews 1, and it, it is God pointing our eyes back upward toward Jesus and who he is and how he's our Savior, better than anything else that there is out there. I think this happens for us, this like looking up at stuff a lot more when we're kids. You notice there's a whole lot of younger kids that we have in our church. Young kids, right? You, you're you pretty short. What do you do almost all the time, every day? You got to look up, right? But I think every once in a while for us as adults, this kind of looking up at amazing stuff above us, this kind of happens to us too. I can remember one specific time for me. Uh, it was not too many years back, definitely when I was an adult, when Joanna and I still lived in the Milwaukee metro area, and we were in a different part of the city than we were normally in. I can't remember what was going on. I don't remember why we were shopping 
uh, this specific one, but we went to Target just to get some basic necessity kind of thing. And I remember walking down kind of the big aisle and walking through and looking up and out of nowhere, I saw him. Now, if you know me, I'm a fan of basketball. I grew up in Milwaukee. I'm a fan of the Milwaukee Bucks. And I looked up walking down that aisle and I saw one of my favorite Bucks players, Chris Middleton. Tall dude, still plays for the Bucks, still all-star level kind of player. And walking through the aisle in Target and walking towards me is, is Chris. Now, literally, he is tall. So, okay, I got to look up and see Chris is up there. But if you could have been the fly on the wall and you could have seen me and what was going on, you would have noticed there was something different happening. My heart started to beat just a little bit faster. In my head, I was trying to play it out as, okay, do I act really cool, right? And just play it off as, oh, hey, Chris, how are you doing? Or, or do I do the other thing and, Chris, will you please sign my hand? Will you, like do something, take a picture with me kind of thing. And uh, you could like see my brain processing this and malfunctioning as he's walking closer and closer. And I remember looking up and watching him and I did just let him walk by afterwards. But I bet you if he saw my face in that moment, he saw this really poor adult man who was starstruck from just another guy who wanted to go to Target and buy something for himself and his family. I think we get this a little bit in our lives where we have these moments where we have to look up at the person of super high rank, the general that's around, all these, these starstruck kind of things. And this is where the, the book of Hebrews kind of turns for us in chapter 2. Hebrews 1 has us looking up at Jesus, who he is, how he is God, how he is so much better and above us. And then chapter 2 does kind of the opposite thing. Here's one of these layered quotes from the Old Testament that makes us think something different, a different direction we need to look now. The writer says, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. But they're kind of down here. Chapter 2 turns and God sends us back to here and now and has us think about humans the last and best of his creation but humans chapter one Jesus beginning of chapter two and then now we're here and what's more surprising is chapter two doesn't just focus on us humans here and now God brings our eyes down and we look right next to us and now we start to see the one who's standing next to us in the here and now the writer says, we, we see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while. Instead of only seeing Jesus up there, fully God, glory, power, authority over all things, we see Jesus here, the one who lived a life lower than angels. We see one who set aside his glory and power and honor. We see one who lived like us. The writer sends our eyes back downward and it starts us thinking about other parts of the Bible where we see titles for Jesus, like Son of Man, like the man Christ Jesus. And we get to see these descriptions that tell us really plainly Jesus is a human. It sends us to different parts of the Bible where we read these like, one-line descriptions of what's going on with Jesus. And we get to see that Jesus was a real human being who had a real human body with arms and legs and a head that people literally could have gone and hugged Jesus, that people did actually do that, like us here in this world. In the Bible, we read all these times about Jesus, not only just titles and body, but Jesus living a human life like you and I did were tiny sentences, Jesus was tired. Or the shortest sentence, Jesus wept. Jesus had real human emotions. Jesus had real human relationships. Jesus had real human experiences. Chapter 2 takes our eyes off of Jesus up there, and it puts us back in Jesus here 
And now, Jesus, who is one of us, and all of it to get to the point of what real human Jesus does for us. The writer continued, In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. We look down and we see Jesus, who is like us in every way, and then we get to this, Jesus suffered. Jesus experienced this sin-messed-up world with sin-messed-up people. Jesus suffered what sinners deserve for the punishment for sin by taking on that punishment on his own, and he suffered. The writer in chapter 2 balances us out. You cannot only see Jesus up there. You have to look down and see Jesus here and now on earth to do his work. He's the one who would suffer. If that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable and it kind of feels wrong to be looking down and thinking of suffering in pain, Jesus kind of thing, we can admit that there is a part of us that kind of is wrong about this. Because you and I, we live in this world, and even here and now, we want the glorious, victorious, honored, all-powerful Jesus. We want that all-knowing, all-controlling God who is over all things right now, who's bigger than any election coming up in a couple of weeks, who's bigger and the solid rock that we can hold on to in any personal tragedy and loss. We love Jesus up there. We love glorious Jesus. And I think that's why it's really good for us to think through if we've got improper expectations for our lives when we're connected to that Jesus. When we suffer, we start to question God's plan for us. When we face loss in our lives, we turn away from God because God could have stopped this from coming to us. We, our hearts, we really love Jesus being God and I think if we're honest, there's this sinful part of our hearts that wants God just to elevate us, get us up to his level, get us out of the here and now, and be up there with him for everybody else to see. But that's not the Jesus of Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2, we get these quotes and these descriptions of the beaten and broken and suffering Jesus in this world just like we experience in our lives. Here we find multiple times words like death and suffering and low to describe Jesus. Here we see how he's one of us. So most of you know that I'm pretty new to the military lifestyle, the military life, and you guys have been awesome and gracious at slowly helping me understand better what life is like. One of the really great books uh, that Diggs recommended that I've read two of them now have really helped me understand military service and especially any of you that have gone through active combat kind of situations. They've been all about trauma. One of the things that uh, trauma does to a person, no matter who it affects, where it happens, when trauma is going on, if you're going through trauma with somebody next to you, Trauma bonds you forever. You go through something awful together, and there's this part of you that understands this part of them that everybody else outside of that cannot understand, but if you're there and you've experienced it, you're together. You're linked from that point on. You go through something hard and awful, and a trauma bond forms. It's, uh, it's the high pressure of boot camp as you go through right, with the drill instructor in your face, and then later on that night, you and your battle buddy talk about it, and yeah, there's, there's trauma bonding that goes on there. It's you that were deployed, that saw active combat, that saw real live fire shooting at you, the person next to you, you you've got the trauma bond there. There's this weird thing, though, that trauma bonds, trauma unites people. Trauma does this crazy thing that even you can be worlds apart, speak different languages, when you go through trauma together, it can make you one of us. 
I think this is the picture that God really wants us to see of Jesus in Hebrews 2. Because Jesus goes through trauma. Jesus suffers. Jesus feels pain. Jesus goes through the loss of this world just like us. Jesus is the real human being who went through it like us. And one of the best things about this is it's not just like one of us where maybe he kind of gets like the collective kind of thing. No, this is Jesus with you specifically. You and your life that you live. You and the trauma that you've gone through. You and everything that you're experiencing in this life. This is Jesus here on earth for you. He's not only one of us. He's one with you specifically. The writer says it beautifully. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. This is what God speaks specifically just to you. He knows your life. He knows your struggles. He knows the here and the now, which isn't great, And there's this awesome word, it's a very Bible word, but this word atone, you know what Jesus does for you alone? He makes you at one with God. You. This is what he did. He won a better place for you. He brings you back together with God. You see, Jesus had to be like us. He had to live like us. He had to know what it's like to be one of us so that he could die for us. Hebrews 2 teaches that Jesus being like us is part of God's plan. And and this is actually cool because it comforts us to know he's not just our Savior up there, above us, above all of this. He is our Savior who came down. Our God who died for us to bring us out of this here and now and trauma and awfulness so that one day we can be at one with him face to face again. And did you catch all the ways that God helps us know what our relationship with God is like right now because of suffering, trauma, Jesus? We're family. We're his brothers and sisters. Jesus wants other people to know that he's one of us. Jesus wants everybody to see that he's with us, that we're with him. We get called children of God, and God teaches us that this is a permanent relationship that will not change. This is why we go back to our baptisms. This is the real identity that God gives us when we do celebrate the Lord's Supper here. This is one of my favorite parts of being a pastor, and one of, I think, some of your favorite parts of our worship service on Sunday morning, where we all admit that we're sinners that need help, and I, as God's representative, what do I get to say? You're forgiven. Your sins have been taken away. This is what Jesus is teaching us. He's one of us. He's our brother. He died for us. We're God's family. We're at one with him, even right now. You're starting to see how some of the layers of Hebrews work. Jesus is better. Jesus is like us. So if you haven't yet, I'm telling you again, read through the whole book of Hebrews. Go back, even if it's just today, start with these two, two chapters, and I promise you, you're going you're gonna to read through these words, and you're going to get so much more even now. But don't only do it through Hebrews. Do it every time you're reading the Bible. Find the layers. Find God's plan to save us. Discover that, yep, Jesus is better. Jesus is like one of us. That God has a plan. And this is all part of his plan to save you. Amen. Please stand. In response to God's word and knowing what Jesus has done for each and every one of us, uh, here at Ascension, we take time and we confess our faith. We say, this is what we believe. Uh, Today we're going to use words called the Apostles' Creed, words that summarize well what the Bible teaches, words that are based fully on the Bible. We'll say these things together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can sit down. One of the best ways that you can get connected with our church and you can help us to keep each other connected to Jesus and reach out with this good news of Jesus is uh, if you would get connected simply by taking out your phone, scanning the QR code, and filling out one of our Connect cards online. What that does is it helps us remember that you were here, that you worshiped with us. Uh, if you're willing to share your info, it also gives me an opportunity to reach out and ask hey, what do you think about our church? What do you think about what we teach? Give us real feedback from real people. We need you to do that to shape our church to be what it can be. Uh, there, there's also uh, an option for prayer requests where as you're filling out a Connect card, you can say, Pastor, we'd like you to pray for this thing. Those prayer requests come to me. They don't go to anybody else. Nobody else sees them. They only come to me. So know that those things are coming to me. Uh, and as you do that, I am praying for you throughout my week in my devotion time especially. Uh, and finally, as uh, God calls us to as Christians, to pool our resources uh, for him and his ministry, to keep each other connected and to reach out with this good news of Jesus. Uh, if you've been moved to give financially, you can do that online through our website. You can do that through the offering plate and back. But for everybody here, there is no obligation. God loves a cheerful giver. We'll take a couple minutes to get more connected. Please stand for prayer. If there's ever anything we can pray for you on Sunday mornings, let me know. I'd love to include it in our Sunday morning prayers. Uh, there'll be a little bit of time for personal and private prayer where you can pray quietly and, and let God know things that are on your heart and on your mind. At the end of our prayer time, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. This is a prayer that Jesus responded to his disciples' awesome question. They asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. The Lord's Prayer is God's response to that. It's, it's Jesus' way of laying out, here's how you pray. It covers all awesome things that we need for our lives, and, and that'll be the closing of our prayer time. Let's pray. Lord God, once again, we thank you that you've brought each and every one of us here and all of us who are watching to know that Jesus is our Savior. Not only are you God above all things, but you are God who chose to come down, to live in this world, to suffer for us, and to win our salvation. Give us confidence in what you've done for us. Help us know that this is who we truly are, that our identity 
as children of God, people forgiven and loved by you. God, uh, you've blessed us in so many ways with our country, with uh, lots of different blessings here, especially you bless us with uh, people who serve us in the military. We ask that you continue to be with everybody who uh, works in that realm, with all the people, especially though that are deployed right now. Uh, we ask that you keep them safe, whatever they're doing in all their jobs. Help them to know that uh, you have forgiven them in everything, and, and if it's your will, keep them safe right now. God, one of the big things about our church is that we want to live life together, that we want to be family. Help us to continue to work together and to get to know each other, that we learn names, that we spend time eating food together, that we support and encourage each other in the tough times. God, bless us as we try to carry this goal out for ourselves. And, and if it's your will, bring lots of new people here to be part of our family, to not only be encouraged, but also to join us as we go out and share this good news with people that need to hear it. God, hear us also today as we pray our private prayers. And hear us as we join together and we pray this prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You can sit down for our closing song, What Love My God.
Good morning again. Thanks to everybody for joining us, whether that was here in person or you joined us online. We are glad and thankful and excited that you're with us. Big thanks to everybody who served. Uh, thanks to Amanda for playing piano, being here in person today. All is awesome. Uh, many talents and blessings. Uh, Audrey for helping pick music and worship team working on that. For our tech team in back, thank you guys. If you're watching online, it's only because of them that you can see and hear this and know what's going on. Uh, really awesome things that we are very thankful for. Uh, thank you, Sunday school kids. If you didn't before, like we got to clap for them before. Should we clap for them again? Thank you, kids. I hope that it was not a trauma bonding experience where you had to stand in front of us and got to share and got to sing, but instead a really awesome reminder of something that we get to do, all of us as Christians, we get to share Jesus. You guys are awesome examples for us that we can follow and do that. Uh, lots of stuff to go through today. So before we get there, just uh, a good reminder for us at Ascension, we like to do this. But today there are guests and visitors here. There's people here that you don't know their names. You've never met, befo met them before. Introduce yourself. Say hi. Uh, get to know each other. It starts by simply just learning names. Uh, but also uh, get to know them. Do it. Get outside your comfort zone. If this is your first time here, that big wooden table out in front, we call it the Welcome Center. Stop in there before you leave. We have a gift for you. We want to just say thanks, and uh, if you're willing, share contact info. Give us some feedback a little bit. Set up a time to get coffee or food with me. Uh, awesome stuff. Wednesday, we continue our story adventures. This is uh, time just reading books, hanging out, singing songs, doing a craft, and uh, getting to know each other. 10 a.m., lots of room for more kids. Invite people. Come here yourself. It's a good thing. On November 2nd, this is less than two weeks away. We have our autumn uh, jubilee coming up. This is our big uh, vendor. We're going to have lots of vendors come in to share awesome stuff. All the proceeds from the raffle are going to go towards CHU program, which is coming up. Skylar's going to tell you a little bit more in a minute about that. Uh, but if you would like to invite people, there's on the high top table on the left on your way out, simple invites to this and story adventures. Uh, grab one, share it with somebody you know, put it in a place, a uh, public bulletin board kind of thing. Let people know we want them to be here. We want to fill up the parking lot. Lots of people. Uh, also, another awesome way where we strive to be family here at Ascension is in our life groups. These are small group Bible study, uh, get together for food kind of hangout things. Uh, if you don't know, you can sign up online for these things in our church center app. But if you don't have one, if you haven't been to one, you can still take the plan for this and do this yourself. It's going to dive into what we talk about today, throughout the week, and deeper on. Uh, you can do it as a family. Those are on the high top table on the right back there, too. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. This is good. I talked about trick-or-treating in our neighborhood last week in the sermon just a tiny bit. But if you want to come over to our house, that's our address, 727 Savannah Drive. Uh, come hop over about 4.30, we'll meet, we'll eat a little bit of snack, we'll go walk together, you'll get to see some really cool costumes, costumes right, awesome decorations. Uh, is it, today? it is not today, not quite today. Still we got good treats coming up today too, but uh, just let us know you're coming, we'd love to have you be a part of that. There are snacks and treats and good things that will take some time and hang out in there. Uh, this is the second week. Oh, Margo, we'll stay back here. This is the second week where I've encouraged you to read the book of Hebrews. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and admit if you did or did not read the book of Hebrews this week. But I can promise you, uh, if you're reading it, you're going to have lots of really good questions. Today for Bible study time in here, though, we're actually going to do one of our starting point lessons. This is our kind of Bible basics, getting people connected to our church ones. Uh, if you... If you read the book of Hebrews with kind of a weird lens, you're going to get some really weird stuff out of it. So today, we're going to do the starting point lesson that is all about how you read the Bible. Stick around. I promise it'll be worth it. I promise there's going to be stuff you've never thought about before. As you're reading the book of Hebrews, though, you kind of need this basic thing to, to get into it and to understand a big chunk of it. So stick around for that. Sunday school is going to meet over in the education wing in about 20 minutes. Back in here, we'll do that uh, interpretation study in here. Youth group will be back over in the corner over there. Whew, that's a lot of announcements for me. Skylar, I'm going to turn it over to you. She's going to share a couple things about the Jubilee. And uh, 
good things that we've got going on. We're excited. Thank you. I'm going to be a lot quicker this week, um, but I do see some new faces. So if you don't know what's going on with the Jubilee, it's basically a fall vendor fair. We're raising money for Chew. We've got a uh, petting zoo with a kangaroo and a camel. There's a bunch of vendors and crafters coming out. Uh, face painter. We're going to be selling concessions. I did submit everything for our alcohol permit, and it looks like that's going to go through, so we should be able to sell beer and wine, too. Um, we have a volunteer schedule, and we already have a lot of uh, volunteers signed up, but we we really, really need some more. Um, do we have the schedule still or on the screen? Okay. I have the schedule here. It's going to be out on the Welcome Center. It's split up into two-hour shifts because we want you guys to come out and enjoy the event, too. And I forgot to mention last week, you are more than welcome to bid on all the raffle prizes. Um, we have a ton of those from local businesses, too. Um, but, yeah, it looks like 12 to 2, we're pretty good. 2 to 4, we really need concession workers from 4 to 6. Uh, you get a T-shirt if you volunteer as well for free. We really need, we don't have anybody. We just have one person signed up for raffle ticket sales. That's going to be our one of our biggest money makers. So we really need some more volunteers for that. Um, and then raffle prize supervisors. Um, that's the least demanding job that we've got. So you can just basically sit in a chair and make sure people are being honest out here and nobody's swiping the raffle prizes. Um, and if you think that in order to volunteer, you're going to need child care, just come and see me. I do have it as a slot. So if it looks like we need it, let me know, and we can try and make that happen. Um, did I get everything? I think so. Okay. And if you have questions, you can come grab me or Lindsay uh, or Diggs. So thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Skylar. You can also talk to me. Let me know any questions you have. That's a lot of announcements. All right, go eat some good food, hang out, get to know each other. God bless your weeks as you live for him.